Welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a quick little tour on some of my pails that I planted out. I know there were people asking me about them, and they wanted to see an update on the pails that I did. So here they are. Let's take a quick look at them. That's when I started them. And they're pushing about 12 to 15 inches right now. So they're still small. I'll bring you back and show you a, a better update once I, um, you know, once I get a little bigger. Try to zoom you in up on those. I'm just giving you a quick view of them. I'm not gonna go over every variety just take way too long just kind of show you some of the plants you can see the ragoose ragoose uh, dwarfs right here we got some furry berries I'm not sure which one this is this is furry bumblebee this is an interesting one that'll be interesting to reveal oh, oh he dropped off had one of those tortoise beetles there Let's see, I'm not sure what those are. Peach Keen, this is going to be interesting. I'm really interested in this. I don't think it's a dwarf per se, but when you grow these in small pails like this, it, they tend to stay smaller. They're not probably going to get eight feet. So I don't know if it's a dwarf, but it'll probably stay small. And uh, it's supposed to be a good variety. So I figured I'd give that one a go. Jade Beauty in the back. Uh, let's see. I can read off a couple of these. Now, this is a basket variety, I believe. This is called the Whipper, Whipper Snapper. And uh, every every pail uh, gets a uh, you know a label. Let's see how I keep my labels over there. And they also get a tag, as you see, I'm putting them here. But I'm filling holes in the side of them, so I have access to the tags on the side. Because once these plants get big, you're going to you ain't going to be able to find any of this. So I keep I drill a hole through the plastic here, and then I put my tag in there. Let's see what else we got in here. Dwarf baja cha right here, and I wouldn't almost didn't make it in the beginning. It kind of looked like this one. That one's stunted for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Some of, some of them are stunting. Maybe I'm not mixing my soil good. I'm not really sure. But uh, sometimes that happens. But not very common. It will happen once in a while. This one did it. So that one's probably going to come out of there. I'm going to maybe drop another variety in here. Pull that one out. Cut the roots off. Put that in a cup like I showed you how to recover stunted tomato plants. I'll maybe do another update video on that. I'm going to cut these root systems off it, remove the, all the soil from there, wash it out with uh, chlorine just to make sure there's no disease, and then set it up and then fill it up with soil and put a new plant in there. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit behind the rest of them, but that's okay. I, I sometimes succession plant anyway, so I'll get tomatoes later from that one. Uh, I'm not sure what variety this is. This is called Velvet, Velvet, Velvet Red. Oh, I do got a tag on that one. Oh, son of a gun. There's a tag number. I wrote down another tag. Okay, that one's Velvet Red. Doesn't look very velvety to me, but it might be like a Whipsonicon Peach variety. So if the plants are generally like Whipsonicon Peach or Garden Peach, the tomatoes get fuzzy, but the plant doesn't. Not like a woolly variety, so we'll have to see. We'll see what we'll see what we'll see what happens. All right, so we'll see what else we got here. We got window box Roma right here. I believe there's a dwarf variety over here. We have Linda. That's a dwarf variety as well. 
you can see it's kind of growing right into the handle so I may have to get in there and do a little operation on that and swing that outside that handle because that's going to just cause not problems but I don't want it right there because it can't grab the handle so I got to get in there and work that one now these plants aren't they've only been planted for about three weeks two and a half weeks or something like that so they're making progress quite quickly let's see here what else we got we got dwarf something here dwarf Egypt that's from the tomato project dwarf tomato project we got red dwarf over here whatever that is yeah you gotta sometimes with these things you gotta you gotta you gotta be ah, I broke it that's all right they're gonna break off. You gotta get in there and get to them. You know, move them out of the way as they're coming in. Once they come in, you're fine. You know, you gotta get them around that handle. Then they grow around the handle. You're good. Uh, this is a Russian variety. We'll review that one later in the year. I'm gonna do my my uh, tomato reviews a little different this year, as opposed to last year. So we gotta shorten them up. Dwarf Bendigo blush right there here's some of the woolly varieties I was telling you about a bunch of them right here woolly K I believe this year we're doing we're doing we're doing this one this one would look like an interesting variety now these aren't dwarfs but I grow them like dwarfs because you don't know which one of these are gonna be small or get huge Here's an interesting variety. That's going to be real fun. Wow, that, that just totally vanished, huh? Seriously? Here it is. Yeah, they could be a pain in the neck to get in and out, but for the video, I'll take them out for you. Like I said, there's Wooly Kate, Wooly Kate Yellow, I think. We'll go over them once we get into there. These were planted later. That's why they're small. They've just been planted later. There's Moonlight Mile. That one's really going to be interesting. This is the predecessor to Fallon First Snow. So that was the original variety. That was originally what it was before they created Fallon, for, uh, Fallon First Snow. So that one's rare to get. So I actually got lucky. I believe that's correct. Uh, let's see here. What do we got here? I think this one is called, um, this is a real nice one. This is, I like this one a lot. This is called Borghese Vas Roman. That's made by, what's his name? He's a tomato breeder. Excellent variety. I liked it last year, so I figured I'd get rode in a bucket. This one's a very slow grower, but it's like a basket, and it kind of hangs down. So, I'm going to try to limb them up, you know, like string it up, and then let them hang down. I don't want because they'll grow right onto the ground. These this variety will get really long. It'll hang down. Let's see what else we got. Pendolina orange. That's supposed to be a dwarf, I believe. These are all dwarfs and maybe some micro dwarfs in there. Father Frost right there. That's Father Frost. No, not that one. Where is it? This is Father Frost. This was planted late. Rather for us. That one's a Russian variety and um, it's very popular in Russia. So so a lot of these foreign varieties are very popular in, in Russia and Ukraine and Belarus and places like that. Right? Now, a lot of people say, oh, you go through all that trouble putting these these tamp these things on top, right? Here's one that I didn't have a lid for to lock down. And I left it like this because I wanted to show you what they did. See the squirrels? I left it like this. And the squirrel still got in here. And he dug out. See how he digs out the whole side of my pail? Not the squirrels. It could be squirrels or chipmunks. It's either one or the other. And uh, they dig out the whole pail. You see what they do? The dirt's all over the side. It was all over the ground. So now I have to like... I got to go out of my way now to buy one of these rings and cut it out and snap this down and lock it down. Even though it has this tarp on it... They're still getting in there, and they're still digging it up. So that's why I do this, guys. 
I don't just do it because I got nothing better to do it. You have to stop them from getting in there. If you put this on here like that, they won't touch your plants at all. But as soon as you have something like this, they're going to go in there and dig that whole pell right out. Looking for a, a walnut or something. And then, uh, let's see, right here we got fairy tale pumpkins right here. A couple of them don't look too good. They don't look like they're doing good. But the ones in the back are doing fine. That might be because this is old soil. Never turned. And right there, those are 100 pound pumpkins. 100 pound or so. They're not, they're not Atlantic giants, but they, these will get big. They'll get to 100 pounds. They get quite large. And uh, they start really, they're, they're really a large variety. So we'll see if we get lucky this year and get some large pumpkins out of it. And let's see, what else we got going here? I'm just showing you what's up here right now. And then I'll, I'll do a garden tour back here. You can see where I extended the garden out. There's probably, uh, there's probably about 150 to 200 tomato plant varieties in that little back garden right there that I extended out. I'll take you back there once it, once they start to bump up a little bit. And of course you got all of this stuff. This is really interesting. This one right here, it's called the Desert Raisin, Solanum Centralia. This comes from Australia. I got really lucky on getting seed for this. Uh, it's almost impossible to get seed for this, but I got seed for it. And uh, you, it's not easy to sprout. This stuff you have to soak in gabrielic acid. And um, there's a whole process to get it to sprout, but we'll see. Maybe we can get lucky and get some uh, tomatoes off this. They're light tomatoes. They're actually desert raisins. Um, I've, I've actually eaten some of the dried fruit already, so it's quite sweet. It's got a very strange flavor to it, but... Um, we'll talk about that once we get to that point where they're actually growing up. I'm gonna, you can see there's a whole bunch in here. So I'm going to end up having to separate those into multiple pails. And I'll be wintering some of those over as well. Or attempting anyway. Stick tomato, we're growing like 10 or 12 stick tomato for, you know, plants this year. We want to make sure we get plenty of seed for the stick tomato. Because uh, they barely make any tomatoes. You might get, if you're lucky, six tomatoes off a of plant. Plants, for me, never got any bigger than about 18 inches. And that was about it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try to get some more, some more of those sick tomatoes. These are just extras. Rosie Francis, a microdwarf. Moneca, another microdwarf. These are all, like, extras. I do uh, germ tests on them and just see if they come true or whatnot. Tiny Totem. This is another nice one. This one's getting pretty big in a greenhouse. It's small out here because it's in a small pot, but in the greenhouse it's getting quite big. Jacalos. Uh, what is that? Plumberella Lead. Red. This is supposed to be a dwarf, but it can also be a... It's kind of like Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim can be a dwarf, but it can also be a micro dwarf if you grow it in small pots. So it's kind of like that. You put it in a big pot, it'll get to like 30 inches tall. You keep it in a small pot like this, it won't get no more, no bigger than like 6 inches and fill up with tomatoes like a microdwarf. It's a very strange variety. We got a uh, Thai Orange Mutant. Now, this is a, uh, a hybrid that was crossed between the hot Thai Hot Orange and the Mutant uh, Pepper. So, this is one of them. That's another. We're going to repot those eventually. We're growing some ultra coli this year. We're going to plant this out, probably in that little back garden. We're doing some loofah this year. The problem with loofahs, guys, and this is something I always seem to forget about this, uh, loofahs, when you plant loofahs, you got to start those in, like, January when you start your, your pepper plants. Loofahs are an extremely slow-growing thing. Um, it can take literally half the summer just before this plant gets about two feet and then all of a sudden it starts taking off. You really want to get, you need to start these very, very early. I didn't start these until just now, so I'm probably not going to get anything off of that. But I did a germ test on them anyway because I got seed for them. Um, these are uh, adult tomatoes. This is, these are different varieties. Adult tomatoes, somebody sent me these, so we're growing them out again this year. We're going to review those. What else we got here? TPS. A lot of people are asking me about um, my true potato seed, and they're asking me, have I ever gotten potatoes from it? And the answer is kind of like a yes and no. I, I never followed through with it fully, though I've grown my seed from true potato seed before, 
and got little tiny little seed potatoes, but I, I don't remember what I did with that. So it, it just kind of fell through the roof. But this year we're gonna grow these seed potatoes out, these uh, true potato seeds out, and see if we could get potatoes off it, and then try to, uh, you know, plant those seed potatoes again and, and get uh, actual good eating potatoes out of that. So we will follow up on that one. Uh, over here we got the, this is, this is called uh, Solanum chiliense, not chinense, chiliense. This is actually a plant that, that uh, originates from the deserts of um, Chile, believe it or not. And um, it's a very rare and difficult variety to get. So I'm hoping that it doesn't get sick on me, you know, or die or whatever. But so far, so good. It's doing, it's bigger than I've ever gotten them before. I've tried growing this plant probably... Oh, I don't know, probably about six times, and I failed almost every single time, and I couldn't even get the seeds started the first time, so I'm actually lucky. I, I actually received quality, up-to-date, grade, high-grade seed for it, and it actually sprouted, and it is growing. Um, this is another version of the same thing. As you can see, this one's like a more darker color. It's got more purple on the stem. It's, it's supposedly a shorter or taller variety. It's different than this. So these are two different, they're, they're, two, they're from the same species, but they're different varieties, if you will. Different cultivars or whatever, but uh, they're both Solanum chiliense. So yeah, we got those going. We have uh, over here, I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, this one looks like it's just about dying. Done dying, this sun has been absolutely killer lately. Um, it's been cooking everything in sight, including these. Uh, this is more jolt tomatoes. Here's some more uh, jolt tomatoes. And that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick review. I'm talking low because I don't want everybody to hear what I'm saying, you know. People out here, there's nothing better for them to do except listen to you. And there's some uh, Cape gooseberries. That's going to be interesting. I'll, um, I've done those before. I've been growing them for like several years now. They're just really hard to get them to, to fruit because they take literally forever. But we'll see if we can get them to fruit this year. I might have to bring them in. Look <laughs> at I got lettuce growing along the side of my ground. I didn't plant that. There's my um, chamomile flower. You can see they're, they're popping up out of the crack of my side. Like, That's all right. I'll cut them down and eat them. Drink them, make tea with them. We, we're growing cactus this year. That ought to be really interesting. Um, these were a couple of pads that somebody gave me. They're a North American variety. They grow up in and around the region to work up here where I live. And we just grow some lettuces and stuff like that. But I'll give you guys more of a formal tour once everything gets up and running. And we got, you know, everything's, you know, coming up. Like right now they're going through transfer and transplant shock. And so, you know, I have to just deal with that. But anyway, guys, it's starting to rain. And before I go... Give you a big piece and uh stay tuned i'll do another i'm gonna do a greenhouse tour with some of the pepper varieties and then i'll do a tomato greenhouse tour on the tomatoes for you tomato guys and girls out there i know most of the pepper people don't really care about the tomatoes and the tomato people don't care about the peppers so i separate them for that reason but i'll do a tour for that pretty soon so just hang in there and um uh, we'll get those coming out soon once everything starts to kind of get going. So it's still a little bit early in the year, but hopefully by mid-June, mid to late June, things will be bumping. So anyway, guys, that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.